What? Listen to this podcast right now! Hey. Do you want to hear a fucking podcast about anything and everything? Yeah. Like movies, oh my music, God. television, and more? Oh my God. Well, you've come to the right place. Yes. Subscribe to Journey Into Comics Network, oh. and you get Podcastrophy, oh hosted God. by me, yes. Dick. Why not throw a couple bucks to the Patreon? It's yes. your choice. Yeah. This is a Podcastrophy. That sounds so awesome. The following is a Journey into Comics Network production. I'm a dude who likes brews. It's time for Brews with Dudes. Ah, juicy. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Brews with Dudes. I'm your host, Nick Maxson. Joining me once again is Mr. AJ. How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing all right. I'm uh, pretty much ready for uh, pinball tonight. It is pinball night. This is uh, Team Pinisher on the show tonight. We're not doing too hot in the league, uh, but, but we did a little better uh, week two than we did week one, so hopefully tonight we're taking the gold. I believe finals are next week. Um, um, so, I think finals are in two weeks. Is it taking a break? Because there's only four teams, I think. There's four teams, but you get... No, it's five teams. Yeah, there's five teams, and, you each, and there's five breaks. So it'll go six weeks. All right, let's not get too... Anyway, anyway, we're getting too, we're getting too in the muck about that. So as you probably heard, that's Austin sitting over there. He's joining me again. That's two episodes in a row. That might be three episodes in a row. It might be three. I don't know. I don't know. Let's... Moving on a record here. Yeah, we're getting there. All right. Also, we've got Brett Maxwell returning. Hello. How's it going? Excellent. Going good, real good. Good. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into beer number one. Uh, actually, every single beer tonight is going to be from Chili Water Brewing Company in Indianapolis. Uh, a couple months ago, Brett and I stumbled in there uh, before going to a show. I believe it was Hawken, but we don't need. It to was. Get, we do not need to get in the mud about that either. I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Uh, they had really, really great food and pretty damn good beer. So we. Uh, uh, we were going down to Indy to... We were supposed it was to be my birthday. To, it was Brett's birthday. We were supposed to be going to a poutine bash, but it got canceled. Unfortunately. So we're like, fuck it, we're going to Chili Water. And uh, it was another great experience. A couple funny things happened that night, actually. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think Zach was as happy with the experience. No, not, not with the whole thing, but... Anyway, so uh, this one is called... This first beer is called Built to Last. It's a German Pilsner. Comes in at a relatively low 4.7 ABV. Um, yeah... Let's ju- dive right on in, guys. Cheers. <sighs> mm. That's a pilsner. Mm. Oh, it's a good pilsner. It's it very pretty tasty. Mm. Pretty clear. Nice golden hue. It's not what you'd expect from like a fine pilsner that you would find on. Labeled on some cans that yeah. you would see around the area. They're not acting like it's the greatest Pilsner of all time, like every other Pilsner I see. It's definitely not a banquet beer. And certainly isn't the quote-unquote king of beers. No. But it I definitely tastes so. much better than either of those three that I just mentioned. I feel like this is going to be a little bit of a uh, cop-out here, but uh, two words that I would use to describe this. Mad, decent. Mad decent. It's a little what bit what about it makes though. you mad? It's I'm just, <laughs> yeah. Why would you be <laughs> mad at a beer that you call decent? It's my angry. are you mad that it's decent and then you hyped it up it on is, yourself? I rode in on the hype train a little too hard. It has, mm. I mean, just looking at this can, like it's very it's very simplistic design. Um, Did somebody like, tell you they were going to make the beer great again? I mean, it says right on the top, a, "Ain't beer grand." There's not even a no. There's no apostrophe in that either. Just ain't beer grand. I am. I'm enjoying it. It's pretty good for what it is. Not a, not my typical style, but it's definitely drinkable. I could probably drink this whole six pack and still move on to more beer. I agree with that statement. It's definitely really light for for what it is. Um, but I mean, what pilsner is it? Honestly, mm. it's definitely a beer I would enjoy between really ass kicker beers. The heavier ones I enjoy. Yeah, it's a, it, it's good filler beer. Yeah. It's definitely good filler beer. Something you know you're still drinking beer, but not really going to get too wanna, fucked up. 
You guys want to know what it really reminds me of? It it kind of tastes like a campfire beer. This is this is the beer that you would drink sitting on a like a nice summer evening around the campfire with your friends before you move on to the real like home wreckers. You'd just be like, "Hey man, I got a built to last." The or, home wreckers. Or or maybe a post doom room show, right? When we decide to just burn half of this stuff <laughs> in the yard. <laughs> yeah. What's in the shed here that we haven't looked at in a while? Let's try to burn it. Hey, can I burn this part of the shed? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that by the time we're done here, we're going to have burned that shit down. I, I just have a feeling. Hopefully that's not incriminating later on down the line. So the last episode we did was uh, Austin and I going over the next couple weeks, months worth of shows that the Doom Room is doing. And I kind of like that format. I don't know if anyone else did because uh, it hasn't aired yet. And we haven't had time to get feedback on it. But So we're going to move into something similar to that. Except this time we're going to talk about a specific show. It's labeling itself a fest, and since there's quite a few bands on it, I might agree with the assessment. Unlike something, like, what was it? There's some show that's coming up in somewhere in northern Indiana or in, like, Chicago, and it's like, something, something fest, and it's four bands. I'm like, I don't... That's not a fest. I don't understand why you're calling it that. But anyway, uh, what we're talking about here is the Indiana Metal Fest, which is going to be March 3rd and 4th at Indiana City Beer in Indianapolis. Um, The reason we're giving it hype, number one, is because my band is playing. Uh, And number two, because... Your friend's band's playing. My friend's bands are playing. And number three, there's a lot of other just really cool bands on there. Mm. Pilsner's already giving me the beer burps. The burps. So we thought we would go through, and there's actually two days of the festival, but um, we're not going to be able to spit off both days in one episode. So we'll probably cover day two in another episode. But today we're just going to focus on day one, Saturday, March 3rd. So I'm going to get a good, nice swig of this of this Pilsner. Maybe finish her off so we can uh, dive into the I've next I've already beer. finished mine. I was really enjoying it. It is pretty good. Yeah, catch up, guys. Yeah, I think we're all actually waiting on you now after I just took mine. Yeah, I mean, you just yeah. shot I, I know I, ju- I just finished it. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying anything other than I just finished it. So, you know, but that was, that was a decent beer. It's... No, no flavors really stood out with it, but I don't think it ever does with me and Pilsners. No, you know, it's no. just kind it was, of. It was good though. Yeah, I drink it again. I might not pay for that's it. That's how that's how the craft breweries are able to bring people in is because they offer something like that for all the old folks that are Bud Light drinkers or Budweiser drinkers or have been drinking Coors Light for the past thirty years. Absolutely, I completely agree with that. I personally. Being somebody that does drink Miller Lite, a fine pilsner, from time to time, and will just buy a case of it so I can have just easy to drink beer on hand, I found this to be a quite flavorful pilsner compared to what you would normally find in a pilsner beer. Normally, just cold and wet, and kind yeah. of just refreshing. Cold and wet. Cold, carbonated. You know, you're drinking beer. It yeah. kind of has that classic beer taste, but. Not just that, it actually has a little more flavor to it that actually pushes itself up that you could definitely taste the difference in that. Oh, yeah. In any other standard Pilsner. I agree with that. I just don't ever really order them, ever. That just, because most of them are just, I I couldn't discern between a Coors Light and a Miller Light and a Bud Light if you handed it to me. I could. If I didn't know, if I didn't know what you poured and you just gave it to me, I don't think I could discern between the three. Maybe we go on a like a week long challenge where we just drink a dirty of each one <laughs> to where we've got the flavor nice and embedded. I've done many dirty thirty challenges and I'm pretty sure I've got a taut palate for uh what those beers taste like. For super commercial beer. Yes. All right, let's get these uh let's get these next ones poured out. The One Hop Wonder. Yes, also from Chili Water, as they all will be. This one is an India Pale Ale, clocking in at 6.9 ABV, and it says nothing else about it. So, their cans are kind of the cans are kind of bland, honestly. Like I was pretty, I was pretty surprised by that. For how much flavor all their beer has, they they really don't have much of a design to the can. No, and they're very. It's a, it's a little hippie spot, you know. It's 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 got colorfulness and yeah, um, yeah. It is kind of weird that they don't. Maybe maybe it's 
Maybe they're better about it now. Following uh, following the social media of Chili Water, they just opened a green room, which is a party room, and they've been doing a brunch special on Sundays, and I see them posting all the mm-hmm. pictures, and oh, man, it looks so good. It looks Sounds so good. good. We might have to take a Sunday morning trip down there. Who that, knows? That would be excellent. Morning beer run. So with the upcoming Indiana Metal Fest, we've got uh, not only is my band Weed Bee playing, but we've got a uh, fellow Lafayette Rockers, Lucifer, playing as well. Uh, oh yeah, the Eternal Metal Preservationists—they bring the thrash, thrash masters. Um, that's going to be fun. Their uh, bassist Tony Davis will also be playing with Weed Bee. Uh, Weed Bee's like melodic. Some death metal influences. Some of the new stuff's got like black metal influences. Um, Lucifist is Slayer and Thrash. I mean, I could I could go into it more, but I won't get into the the gritty details because I'm not a Thrash master. I don't know. But they definitely bring the Thrash. They do for damn sure. Another fun one that I'm excited about is Zephaniah. I love Zephaniah. They are a great power metal band. They consider themselves, according to the Facebook, progressive speed metal. And I would agree with that. I would agree I would with agree that. With that. I, I, Dragon I, Force vibes, they definitely. And then uh, what's what's another one of those really good? Uh, it's super fantasy. Like yeah. fantasy metal. It's really, really cool. What was the latest album about? It was like a Mad Max. Yeah. It's, Lots of Mad Max stuff. It's definitely post-apocalyptic Mad Max sort of that... What was that Tupac song where he was all doing the Mad Max stuff? I don't remember. But anyway, so those guys are uh, originally from Fort Wayne. I'm pretty sure their drummer lives somewhere south. He lives in another state now. But uh, Couldn't say. But yeah, they still play pretty actively, and they play a lot of really fun stuff. They consider some of their influences power, progressive, thrash, death, black, and neoclassical. Neoclassical metal is pretty much as good as it gets, if you ask me. That's the stuff that I like. I so couldn't tell you my thoughts on it because I don't believe I've ever listened to a band and known them to, to be neoclassical. Neoclassical. Ingve. Okay. Mm. Mm. We'll get into it. We'll listen to some neoclassical. We'll, we'll, we'll get out that at another Brews with Dudes. But until then, let's dive right into the one hop wonder. That was pretty tasty. That definitely definitely is a single hop IPA. Yes, it's, it is. It's good. Very cl- it's a very clear taste. It's clean. Yeah. Not it's not too terribly bitter. Um goes down easy. It's got a nice oh mm. it, it a light amber hue. Very light. The the uh kinda, kinda goldeny. The red. the lingering taste is good too. Mm-hmm. It's got a pretty good aftertaste for uh, an IPA. It's pretty. It's I like the uh, the bitter. Like it's very tart, very bitter, and I like that about it. But it, like you know, it's it comes on very strong as soon as you drink it, and slowly just fades away. And like it's a very good, very good taste when it comes to IPAs. This kind of reminds me of like a two hearted almost. Like it's it nothing. Not nearly as uh, nothing thick. Stand, yeah, but. Yeah, nothing like stands out to me, like initially. It, it tastes like an a- IPA. It's got a good flavor to it, but I can't distinguish flavors. Like some of the specialty IPAs we've had, you can definitely taste the specific flavors. Mm-hmm. This stuff, it's just, it, you know, it's definitely a, a dry hopped IPA. But mm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know. I, I, I'm wondering if they used one single style of hops. Absolutely. I'm I'm almost positive that's what they mean. Yeah, and that's how it keeps. I just don't know. That's how it keeps that very uni- uniform flavor. It, it's not super complex because it's yeah, pretty much the definitely. same thing. I'm really digging it. And of course, Isis is getting all the love from Brett right now. And yes, is super insistent on it. You might hear her breathing in the oh, background. I'm almost. almost certain we're going to hear some Isis breathing in the back. Hi. Who else we got playing this metal fest? Scream King, who I'd never heard of. Um, until uh, till we played this. They're from Chicago. Uh, did some listening to them. They are... Um, oh, goodness. What did I do? 
I made a mistake on the notes that I wrote. Fucking R and D department. Um, R&D Scream King. We listen to him. There, it sounds a. Uh, it's like, eighties, nineties, heavy metal, but it, they, they have like high vocals and low vocals. A little bit of like the, I would say, kind of almost like, punk, but black metal at the same time but he does he doesn't really do like i mean i'm talking about the black metal like from the content of the song what was the song that was playing um death, death witch. witch yeah so interesting music video i like the music was. i like the music it was good once it started it sounded yeah. like yeah it sounded like you know 80s 90s just heavy metal and i love that shit it's they're gonna be fun to watch like it's I'm got that excited to watch them like that 80s 90s metal high pitch screams yeah like he's got, he's got some like some of the high pitched and then some Rob Halford stuff and like I don't think it's I wouldn't say the highs like Rob Halford necessarily I'm trying to think of uh, I don't know I don't know I can't describe these bands perfectly the point is we're just gonna try to get you interested enough to come to the damn show and listen for yourself and where is this happening again Indiana City Beer. Indiana City Beer in Indianapolis. I will yep. say I've had uh, I've had one of their brews, and it was really good. It is a uh, Shadow Boxer, is what it's called, oatmeal stout, and it was mighty tasty. I actually served that at my work at Grindstones. I know uh, I know I did see on the list that the R and D department did have a couple of the beers from Indiana City on there. Yeah, it looks I've, like uh, their core lineup. They've got a they call it tribute pale ale. Uh, it's a 5.8-er. Uh, Yacht Rock, which is a wheat ale. That sounds all right. Six, 6% six ABV. Shadow Boxer, the oatmeal stout, comes in at 7% ABV. Um, and then, let's see, some battle-tested favorites, as they call them. They have an Imperial Amber Ale, an American IPA, a Double Pale Ale, an Irish Red Ale, a Black IPA, and a Kolsch. So it sounds like they've definitely got some variety. I'm excited to spend um, approximately ten hours there <laughs> listening to heavy metal and uh, drinking uh, drinking lots of beer. beer. And they've got a hell of a menu, I heard. Plus, there's going to be a bunch of food vendors. Oh, they just... Karma? Karma yeah, food truck? Karma food truck was just black... announced this week going to be there. And then it's like... I think it's like black metal food truck or something. What do they call it? It's like a heavy metal themed food truck. It's going to be cool. So another, uh, speaking of it being in Indianapolis, there's several Indianapolis-based bands. Uh, I'll start with the one that I'm most familiar with, Catalytic. Um, They consider themselves melodic metal. I would pretty much agree with that. Uh, Some of their, what they consider their influences are Killswitch Engage, In Flames, Trivium, All That Remains, Darkest Hour, uh, As I Lay Dying, Soil Work. And I definitely agree with all of that and hear all of that. Um, those guys are in the middle of releasing, I think it's a double album, but they're releasing each album in like two different parts. So it's going to be like four different releases or something. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a lot of material and I'm hoping that we get to hear a lot of it. Yeah. They played here a couple months ago and they've been playing with us for years. So a lot of good guys. Um, excited to get over there. Dustin, the, uh, um, guitarist who does a lot of the writing, uh, He's done some poster work for me in the past for the Doom Room. So, excited to hang out with those guys. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, he... Here's a question for you guys. Just a little off topic from the bands. But uh, what do you guys think is like the weirdest food you've ever had while drunk? And I'll, <laughs> I'll give an example here because I really wanted to talk about this on Brews, especially after drinking a couple. <laughs> Side uh, in the conversation. Just let us sidebar for a minute just, <laughs> with yeah, AJ. We, just, we got an off road. It's it's AJ's off roading time. And now it's time for off roading with AJ, <laughs> the part of the show where AJ completely derails the conversation. Just goes in a completely different direction with it. I was but... about to change it because this beer's making me burp, and it yeah, caught me yeah. in the middle of trying to talk about it. But, <laughs> but, uh, I'll give an example. Uh, one time. I uh, had a pretty good night with some uh, just uh, rum and coke, and uh, we had these eggs that we uh, hard boiled and peeled, and we put them in a jar of banana pepper juice. Oh man! Mm, oh man, that sounds they, good. They they were the best. We were also pretty shwasted, so they were even more fantastic. But that was 
I can by far weirdest food I've ever had, but oh, it was so good. I we used it. to get nasty, and by that I mean we would we would make like hash browns, and we would have like gross a bag of Doritos oh, and some what? nacho cheese and sausage, and we would just <laughs> make all this and just smush it all together, <laughs> and it was the most beautifully delicious concoction. Oh, uh, it, it probably it probably is going to contribute to the heart attack that I'll have someday because we would do that maybe twice a week because we would just get so drunk and we're like, dude, just what do we got in the cabinets? Throw hash, it in. Hash surprise. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was always a lot of fun. I guess mine isn't too weird. It was just a fun drunken night. We made a, a homemade sloppy Joe pizza. Ooh. And it was actually Ooh. it was really fucking good. And then one time we uh, we did a, a version two and we made it a deep dish. Mm. And oh, oh, it was dude. We were so drunk. We were just looking in the cabinets like, what do we have? And we were we were. I was hanging out with a fabled Derek, the one that uh, we wish would see. But uh, right. we ended up we already uh, were wasted and looking around and we're not about to go to the store even if we could have walked. And <laughs> that was what we had. He happened to have a homemade pizza crust. And we just we put it on a fucking pan and made some sloppy Joe pizza. I like that style. It was it was actually really good. I'm thinking about making another one tonight or something. <laughs> <laughs> because like, I because, feel a like drunk coming on. Because the, by the time we get done with uh, this episode and then go to pinball, I'm, We're gonna be I'm probably going to be wasted. So I, it might just be a sloppy Joe pizza night. It very well could be. Mm. Might have to stop and get some hash browns and Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> do, it, do it. We can probably put that on the pizza. Honestly, Dude. like. You probably Add could. Add some chorizo to the mix. So I you got put, chorizo. You put, you put the cheese Ooh, and shit on, or you good. put the, the nachos and shit on top, and then you cover it in a layer of cheese. That way the chips don't burn, and they stay nice and crispy. Dude, that's a fun idea for a food truck. We just get a bunch of ingredients, and just te- you just come up and tell us what you want. Like, <laughs> I want you to throw all this shit on, uh, on a pizza. We give you, we give you like a, a spreadsheet. Sandwich. You're like, okay. We give you yes. a spreadsheet, like when you go to the doctor's office, and you're checking off which illnesses you have and shit. Yep. And so, and so you just you check, I want this, this, this. These. Five of these. Yep, yep. And and each and each item will have like a price next to it. So you just build. You start at zero dollars and you just add it until you get your final total. And That'd then, be great. And the food truck's name is going to be whatever the fuck you want. Yep. So that when people are, get the, the fight, stoners, the stoners are gonna love us. Welcome to whatever the fuck you want. Now what the fuck do you want? <laughs> and That'd I will talk good. with that terrible accent the whole time. Come on, tell me what you want. Hey, tell me what you want. All I'm wondering is what the fuck you want right now. What kind of meats, what kind of veggies, what kind of weird stuff. I got ice cream. You want some of that on there too? You want an ice cream pizza? Hash brown, ice cream, banana peppers. What do you want? Tell me. (laughs) You missed that part. We're going to open a food truck where we just have a list of ingredients and you just say like. I was was thinking about about the ShamWow guy and I immediately thought, what you want? Uh, He wants to try to fight a hooker and get his ass kicked. That's what he wants. (laughs) (laughs) It only has to happen once. (laughs) That guy's doing commercials again, too. Is he? Wow. Yeah. Out of prison? Out of prison. He just gets to go I right I was not back. aware of that. I was yeah, not he, aware that he had been released. He just gets to go right back to doing what he was and, doing? Like, what the hell is that? I mean, hey, he's a good businessman right there. You learn things. You learn things in prison after you get beat up by hookers. Yeah. All well, right. I'm, back to our list. As we're finishing up this beer, I think... Ooh, done I, with this beer. I shared with AJ, who has a slightly smaller cup, and he lift, filled mine all the way up, and I am trying to hold a damn conversation yes. while you're over there burping. I I will I will just say this now. Terrible at pouring beer, no matter what it is. Like, I am just, I suck at it. Because everyone can get, like, the perfect pour where it's like, oh, there's, like, the nice space, and then it's got a good amount of head on it. And then when I do it, it's just like, all right, well, it looks super flat, and probably, like... Yeah. Over portion too. It's just crazy. But yeah, I'm just not very, not very good at it. It's okay. You'll learn. You'll learn one day. When you stop giving yourself so much head, you'll learn. I did. I actually got very little head. That's but the easiest I way gave to mature. Nick a ton of head. Uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> Back on subject. No I more. Did, uh, no I more didn't AJ know your. Uh, <laughs> what, what, okay, so there was a there was a song that we were listening. Okay, to Okay, we earlier. said no more AJ sidebar. <laughs> no, this has to do. This <laughs> has to do with the list. Okay, though. okay, go ahead. Okay. Because uh, there was a band that you were listening to, and uh, it was something about puking something. Puking puke. I think that yeah, was a hate song. Puke. Yeah, hate song. Yeah, hate song. Yep. 
Yeah, they're on the list. So I guess we'll go to them next. Hate songs from Crawfordsville. Um, they label themselves as metal punk thrash, but uh, Brett uh, said it sounded crusty to him. I'm like, this is definitely I, no, crusty. I, I saw crust on their page. It said evil crust, like evil crust punk or something like that. So that was that oh, was so their they considered page. themselves crusty. Yeah. Good for them. Yeah, but, they, yeah, they considered it crusty. They played. Uh, I think they played the uh, Mound Builders Nate Fest last year. And I know I've seen them at least once more uh, because of Jim Bowles. Um, they're awesome. So uh, then another band uh, from Indianapolis that's going to be playing is called ASD. What was it? All Suckers Die? I think that's what it, it was stood all, for. It was All Suckers Die. Um, they consider themselves hardcore. I don't think we could find a link. Um, no, I, you didn't pull up any music. I don't think there was. They consider some of their influences One Life Crew, Earth Crisis, Trial, Cold is Life, War Zone, uh, All Out War, Blood for Blood. Um, so, actually, I think we did pull up a song by them, and I think it was decent. I think we were like, okay. Oh, it did. No, because, no yeah, it was, uh, because, who was it we couldn't it was like find? Kinda, it. It, was kinda, it was kinda like a home, it was a practice. They were in their yes, in their studio practice. Yes, yeah. yes. That was we good. We did find the practice. I, I'm excited for some ASD. They've been around for a while, I believe, too, so... And Earth Crisis being one of my favorite old, uh, late early '90s uh, hardcore bands is, yeah, makes me even more interested in them. Hell yeah! Um, we tried to. There's another band playing called Fastidio, and we could not find anything about them. Um, I, we think they might be punk rock. We're pretty sure they're punk rock. Um, but they don't have a page. If they had a page, it wasn't there anymore. Um, they were, they recently did a, a show with Bizarre Noir, who we're big fans of. Uh, so I know they're real, but they don't have much of a Facebook presence, so. Uh, are we ready to dive right into this next beer? These next two are going to be total yeah. ass kickers. So yeah, I, these are the heavy hitters. This is the the barley wine aged in whiskey barrels. And as soon as I opened the bottle, man, and it's in like a a, a three hundred fifty milliliter like wine bottle, or is it seven fifty? Woo! I didn't. I don't know if I looked on there. It's it definitely is a seven fifty milliliter. It is a. Uh, ABV of 11.6. Ooh. I haven't even... Okay, so we haven't actually taken a taste of this yet, but I'm pretty sure we just went around smelling it and, like... It's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's... This is gonna, gonna hurt be... so good. It smells really <laughs> it, fucking good. It's gonna be crazy. What is, is all I'll say. This is a very, that like, is... dark, like... Almost like a... That's coming from the whiskey. That has to be... It's, it's almost it's kind of know. a uh, cherry rose color. Yeah. Like a, that's what I would say. It's like a, a very, a, a very kind of dark brown, maroon. like what you would brown expect, cherry. like of a deep red wine kind of color. All right, guys. Without further All ado, right. here we go. Oh, tastes like an ass kicker. Mm. Ooh. That was that was good. Full of flavor. The back end, you really taste the whiskey. Oh yeah! Like after taking a sip, it feels like I took a shot I'm warm. of whiskey. It warms yeah. your throat. It doesn't. Yes. It doesn't bite no. on, the, on the on the on the back end. Yeah, but it you can feel the warmth. Yep. No, mm, that is oh, pretty wow. tasty. I wonder. Uh, does it say what kind of barrels? Pretty sure it said bourbon, didn't it? And it says whiskey. This one is whiskey barrels, but I'm not sure like what brand of whiskey. This is bottle 113 of 228. Wow. Batch. Cool. This is batch 150. That's and it pretty was, cool. Wow. Okay, it was brewed on uh, 8-3 of 2016. So cool. this has been this has been aged. And these are for from Chili while. Water as well. Oh, these everything. Are all from Chili yep. Water. Yep. Chili Water. Yep. We were at dinner. And we saw the cooler full of beer, and it came out to just the right price for all of us to split it. All that shit is and handwritten on there, too. That's yeah. all the stuff about the batch number and stuff. That's yep, pretty and cool. Yep, and it's signed by the guy who, who wrote it on there. He's got his little initials there, DK. That's cool. It wasn't too bad, I don't think. It was These maybe 15 bucks, 15, 20 bucks for it. I think altogether, I thought we came out to like... 
50 bucks. It was not bad at all. Yeah. For, for uh, two, yeah, it was about 20 a piece. Yeah. It, so, it yeah. came out to like 50, 55 bucks or something dumb. Um, and we got two of the big bottles like we're drinking now. Uh, the next one is the Dark Sarcasm. Uh, and then a four pack of pints and a six pack of of uh, 12 ounces. So very good. I do want to give a shout out to the beer I was drinking while at Chili Water. That uh, Blood Orange oh, IPA. That is my favorite oh, beer. Oh my lord. That is my favorite I beer. Need, I need that in my life. Blood on the tracks. Almost all the time. I'm a, I'm a big Blood Orange fan anyway. They're just good. I uh, After the first time we had that, um, going to the Hawkins show, um, we... Uh, Every time I explained it to anyone, I just I got the taste in my mouth. It was so rememberable, like it, it, it's so, so good. It, it's got that right level of bitter, um, you know, because I would expect a blood orange to be more bitter, because the the fruit itself is. But this was the right amount of bitter. It had the perfect aromas, taste, everything. It was, it was good. That's the reason why I chose that for dinner. Was well, just for that beer. I'm happy you did because. You and Zach were going on about it. I think Zach more than you about how much he was hoping that the they'd have the blood orange on tap. Zach would have no idea because he's never been there. Oh, I heard somebody. Don't remember. It's probably the only other person that was with you guys, but I don't remember who that was. I don't remember who that was anyway. So he's kind of a prick. Yeah, I was actually at the event, and I remember the one person that was with me. <laughs> yeah, you know, the only uh, one person that was with me. It, it was it was just me and uh, Nick the prick, I guess. Yep, going Nick down the there. Prick. Zach was actually supposed to be with us, but he bitched out. Yeah, I like I the wonder, way that rhymes. Wonder how that happened. Yeah, prick's just slightly better than the dick, so I'll take it, I guess. I like to refer to myself as Nick the Slick, but that's no one agrees. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, we only got two more bands on day one. That was awful. Of the Indiana Metal Fest. It's better than insulting your friends. Yeah. Asshole. Uh, Hell Came Home from Muncie, Indiana. Um, they are they consider themselves heavy metal. And I can pretty much just agree with that. Uh, they consider their influences Pantera, Metallica, Hell Yeah, Down, and Black Label Society. So... Quite a mm. quite a range of quite a range of heavy I, metal I remember these guys. I remember them totally just ditching out on the Doom Room when they booked. I them believe here. that that was a miscommunication thing, and uh, the guy who owns the Doom Room, myself, Nick the Prick, uh, he decided that uh, it was a miscommunication thing. I think we should go with Slick Nick. Slick Nick, thank you. Slick Nick, Slick. thank you, Brett. Thank you, Brett, and. Uh, uh, I, for one, am excited to see Hell Came Home because uh, I did not get to see them that one time when we were supposed to. Um, so, yeah, all the way from Muncie. I want to get my band down in Muncie. I don't really know if a whole lot's going on down there. but I've always hold, heard uh, Ball State is the party area. Yeah, I've been to a Ball I've State party. Heard it. Yeah? Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> not awful like... The party was bad. The party was great. I talked to a blind dude for like 50 minutes. Oh. How long did it take you to realize he was blind? Not very. I mean, he was uh, he was my girlfriend's <laughs> best friend's roommate, so I, I knew he was blind as soon as I saw him, but he was like one of those dudes who was just like, he like, I don't know, he's not like one of those people who was like, hey, can I touch your face? But he was just like, we just sat there and had a nice conversation. It's weird, though. It's like he didn't look, I mean, like, I mean, the how fact could he? You, the fact that you were sitting there with, with your dick hanging out <laughs> for oh, no. after after the first twenty minutes, and he and he didn't point it out. That's when you're like, maybe this guy just can't see it. I, I keep I keep asking him if he can read my watch, but he can't read my watch. It's either that or it's either that or he's just got the biggest balls ever. Like I just this is the this is the type of shit that I get thrown in with my friends. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> you're fine. couldn't help it. <laughs> it's, anyway, it, it happens. I have a natural aura around me. Anyway, everybody I've met, like especially when I was younger, going to Ivy Tech and stuff, I met a bunch of people that came from Ball State because they partied out and fa failed out of Ball State and had to come back home and go to Ivy Tech. I've got a couple friends like that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Not only could you not pass your classes, but you couldn't even keep up on the partying life, so you had to come back to Lafayette. This is Lafayette could be like rehab for them. Lafayette is a whole city full of rehab. <laughs> like, uh, and half the city's rehab and half the city is just hardcore addicts. Still doing it. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I'm talking half the city is the, the meth and heroin addicts. Not necessarily the party. And I, I mean, they may be... We're the, we're the 1%. <laughs> they may be partying like that in Ball we're State. I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. That's why we stay away from the north side. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. All right, we only got one more band to bring up, and then we've got a couple more sips left of this beer. We'll have one more beer. Um... What do we got here? Threat level. Threat level. Threat level is going to be the headline. I've heard some good things about threat level. Uh, they also just consider themselves heavy metal. With their influences being Pantera, Testament, Lamb of God, Slayer, Devil Dryer, Driver, Ozzy, and Kiss. Would you just imagine that? A Devil Dryer? <laughs> <laughs> Almost as good as the... Uh, have you seen the Buried Alive band? But not like buried, like... Strawberry. <laughs> so, oh, buried a lot. So, 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 so all the artwork is like these crazy fruit doing crazy <laughs> things. It's fucking awesome. And they just it's great. shred the fuck out. It's of great. It's actually not bad music either. It's really it's good. It's really good. I'm not it's a actually fan, really good. I'm not a fan of the vocals, but they do, yeah. they do their albums without vocals too. They always really, they really the instrumentals. Versions. Yeah. Nice. And the instrumentals are fucking awesome. That's awesome. So, Threat Level used to be big. Uh, a couple years ago, and then they they went they went dormant. They kind of went their own way. They kind of broke it off. Uh, they actually played the final fifth quarter show. They yes, headlined they that. They got back together for that, and then that was actually a pretty good show. I made it down for that, and they they put on a pretty good set, pretty solid set. And I guess they had enough people pushing for them to keep going that they're doing another show. Yeah. Hell yeah. Wait, That's, the fifth the fifth quarter is done. Yeah, they've been done for a while. Really? They they were done, and then they tried to do. They moved to a new place called Taps Live, and that also hmm. didn't end up working out. Yeah, I had, I had not heard that. Na- that was the first place I saw Nea Oblivioscaris. That's so, crazy wait, to me. Catalytic still. played and Zephaniah. Zephaniah played. That was the first time I had seen Zephaniah. So, if I hadn't been on tour with Eight Bells Vector and Voivod, I would have been there. I was willing willing to meet you halfway. I you, know. dri- you drive halfway, I'll drive halfway, and then I'll drive back. We were actually... You're going to be excited for this. It might... Okay, no. Uh, nope, you're I'm not get- excited. I'm getting... Uh, False alarm. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I, you get those Facebook uh, on this days, you know? And uh, so this past couple weeks, week or so, I've been getting reminders from the tour. So tonight, two years ago, we were in Philly, and it was like two or three days ago, was... When we were in New York City, which was the night that Mabel of Scars was playing. Because I remember because it was the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So, I really wish I was at that Mabel of Scars show. But you were also in New York on tour. With a couple really fucking awesome bands. That was actually the night in New York. Uh, the local opener was Extinction AD. Damn. Who has played in my basement now. Yes. And then they're getting ready to play with Catalytic... Whores in Darkest Hour in India. Darkest Hour is sweet. Dude, Catalytic's getting ready to play with Darkest Hour. Darkest Hour is really sweet. Yeah, no, I, I really want to go. It's on a Wednesday, I think. Yeah, I, I, I do wish you were there for that Nao show. I still do. But you got I me mean, some some signed vinyl that I night. did. You hooked me the fuck up. I did. You're the one that introduced me to them. I had to. I remember we were. I was sitting in your car while you were in the store at one point, and you came out, and I was just flabbergasted, leaning back in my seat, just like, "Who the fuck is this?" And you're like, "Get ready." Nay, Oblivious Scars, and I was like, "All right." And I remember it was fun trying oh, to, at the beginning, like, "Yeah, yeah right." Like, what the Who fuck again? is that? Who? Name? Wait, wait, what was the name of that band? Yeah, it's it, it, Neo 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 Bly. It took it was, me at least two times of asking, Neo like, "Dude, Oblivious Scars, Neo Neo Oblivious Scars." <laughs> yeah, something like that. That's about right. That sounds about right. Oh, that's funny, man. Ooh, I'm it's working yeah. my way through this. I'm loving this beer though. It's oh an yeah, ass it's it's so tasty. It's it, it is beating me up. I, I I didn't drink it quick. I kept sipping on it, so so I got a little quiet with it with how much I was sipping because it was drinks, so tasty. I got full as fuck, and then after that, I was like, all right, I need to I need to slow down a little bit on this. Sipped it down tastefully. 
it makes me think that this might be similar to the uh, the Sam Adams Utopias that they have because yeah. they they um, compare it more to like a brandy. They compare it more. It's like a brandy. So I mean, it's more of a, a sipping sipping beer. So yeah, I just finished mine down, and that one hurt a little bit. Yeah, that it's was really it was really tasty, but super tasty when you're drinking that big of a portion in such a short amount of time. We so there, we are we are finally at the end of our list. Um, that's just day one, though. There's a whole nother day with a bunch of also really awesome bands. Um, it's only twenty dollar per day, or it's thirty five dollars for a two day pass. Um, but it's time to announce something super fun. Ooh! So the Doom Room and Brews with Dudes are giving away a pair of tickets, not one, but a pair of tickets to the weekend. For any, and the way you can enter this contest to get the ticket is to just share this podcast. That's all you got to do. This one, that you're, the one you're listening to right now. You spent the whole time listening to us promoting this show. So now all you have to do, share this to your friends, tag us in it, and one week before, so you're going to have about one week to do this, we will announce a winner. And you'll get two yeah. tickets to the whole weekend. So those of you just tuning in... One more time. You missed it. Sorry, guys. You should have listened to the whole thing. You're going to have to rewind about one minute, maybe a minute and a half. Uh, Probably uh, a good 15 minutes to get a good full deal on Actually, what we were just announcing. We're going to need you to go a full 40 minutes back. We're just going to need minutes. you to yeah, start over again. 40 minutes all go the way back. Go to just... episode one. Go to episode one <laughs> of Birds with Dudes. Listen to all 16, 17 episodes in a row. And then you will know then you all will, the information necessary. Yep. You will piece together the secret message. Can we start planning that? Just a, hiding a secret, a secret message. message? Just hiding in... Like, where we just good. randomly just have a random word. And tonight's code word is the banana sling. Anyway, <laughs> I was and, just, we're just, and we're just dude, dude, you said banana swing, and I was totally thinking, secret word is banana peel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So... Yes. That's doable. You heard you heard the way to do it. Um, tag brews with dudes. We'll we'll probably add a couple more fun things. Like the last giveaway we did, if you bought something from our web store, that got you a play because capitalism buy shit. Capitalism. Um, capitalism uh, drives the world. Maybe if we can find a way for you to prove that you invited so many people to like the page, we can throw you in another another win. So so we're literally asking you for. For if you listen to the whole thing, about one hour of your time, share this, listen to it, invite some people that like the Brews with Dudes page and the Doom Room. The Doom Room could use it too. Invite people to like things. Doom share. Room likes people that like us. Support local. Support. support your local music scene. Why don't you just support local? Do it. Oh man, this one looks good. Uh, I like the head this, on that one. This one is a Russian Imperial Stout aged in a bourbon barrel. It sounds like it's going to be another ass kicker. I actually don't support Russia at all, so I'm going to abstain from drinking this. Really? I thought Russia had like the perfect idea. Actually, I was that was a joke. Actually, I apologize. I was making a really bad joke yeah, too. Stalin had it right. Damn. Fascism is the way. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like my idea? Well, fuck you. Die. Donald Donald Trump's biggest influence. Fascism Probably. in general. <laughs> so you were talking about memories you saw on Facebook. Yes. One that I had shared was, of course, right after uh, the elections that happened, uh, someone posted saying an anagram of Donald Trump's name is Lord Damp Nut. <laughs> I saw that. That's pretty good. So it's Lord Damp Nut from now on. <laughs> it's, speaking of fascism, I just I just watched Some of All Fears oh, yeah. Tuesday. Nice. And that's a... Uh, Good old Ben Affleck throwback, but it was very good movie. Ben Affleck, all about Russia and America on the brink of nuclear war because a fascist terrorist. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, look at Brett rubbing that dog butt. Rubbing that dog ass. All right, let's jump into <laughs> this final beer. What do we got? This one is called Dark Sarcasm, Russian Imperial Stout, aged in bourbon barrels, brewed and bottled by Chili Water Brewing Company. 
Here's you the, boys ready for this? Here's the drinking challenge. Are we you have to ready be sarcastic when we're uh, criticizing this now. Here it is. Mmm. <sighs> Oh, it's so tasty. Oh, that is good. That is good. That is a sweet dessert. Smoky. No, we're not. We're not doing it's got the dark, a smoky dark flavor. I, I definitely get like the the charred, smoky bourbon flavor from it because they usually torch the inside of these barrels yeah. before they mm. before they actually age the bourbon in it and that's fucking good. That would be perfect with like barbecue. That makes me want to collude. Oh, that's the the that is chocolate a... and the bourbon and the char hues coming off that I just is... I would definitely drink this with like a rack of ribs next to me. Fuck yes yes, I bet Fuck yeah. I would too. Or just a rack. Or just yes. a rack. <laughs> I I mean either or. Mm. I'm not gonna complain either way. Mm. I'm I mean my face is gonna get messy eating both. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. That's enough, Austin. We had to go This is P G thirteen. I thought, we were, I thought we were at least PG That means if they're not 13, they don't get the joke. Uh, that is one way to look at it. <laughs> so, so here Mommy, are. what are they talking about on Brews with Dudes? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, buddy. <laughs> we're going to be right there, huh? <laughs> I'm imagining all the 13-year-old girls listening to Bruce with dudes. (laughs) 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 Why do we have to go there, folks? Gonna have to start advertising in high school fucking (laughs) newsletters. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, get get with the... uh, Man... I feel like I feel Give like the this s- point, the, the, how the student government to keep from banning us. <laughs> right. How uh, you know, oh my How long have we been recording for right now? Do we you, are we're 46 minutes deep. 46 minutes deep and you can already tell we've been hit pretty yeah, hard. Yeah, we're toasted. That one made me cry a little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> you can always try to talk to the schools and put some uh put some banners on the side of the school buses. <laughs> right. You know, advertise like the city bus does. <laughs> Roll up to the bus stop. Here's a big bruise with dude sign on the side. Bruise with dude. Take kids. Drink early. Drink young. (laughs) Start young. Die early. Your parents aren't together. Drink now. Speaking (laughs) speaking of speaking of dying early, um Pass this Tide Pod challenge. There's apparently a new challenge on the rise that I've heard about. Glade enemas? No, but that's a perfect idea. Um, It's actually uh, it's called the Hot Coil Challenge. What you awful. do is you turn on your uh, stove range, and like you know how people have like the electrical uh, coils and stuff. Right. Wait till they get red hot. Take your arm, like your forearm, and just stick it on there. And have you heard wait. the tea bag challenge? What is the tea bag challenge? It's taking a bear trap or a mouse trap, <laughs> <laughs> and Fuck you tea no. bag it, and you try to tea oh. bag it. A bear trap might be a little too far. And you just got a bear trap. You just got yeah, to get to in there. I mean, I want to. I want to see the bear trap challenge. I yeah. need to see the bear trap tea think, bag think, challenge. I technically, the one I it. saw was a mouse trap, and it just no. I saw one. A little more hardcore than that. You want to talk about... This thing looked like it was meant for, like, like a, a fucking possum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it looked like it was going to snap the neck on a possum, and this dude dropped his sack into it. This thing is and supposed to And the screams kill that came out of that guy. You want, to talk about, you want to talk about real bad things. I saw a dude take... Or it was a video, an internet video, obviously. I didn't actually just watch a dude do this. That'd be weird. I'm, I uh, watch a dude do it. I don't took, even know what's going to happen. He took a, a bunch of tin foil and wrapped it around his dick like a condom, but it was very pointed and uh, like fine Ooh, at the end. This. So he stuck it in an electrical outlet. Oh my god! And just decided that, it, like, how do you want to? <laughs> how do you? Why do you? Man, what a shocking video! You he <laughs> fucked he fucked an electrical socket fucked an electric- with I bet you- an aluminum foil condom. And lightning touched the tip of his dick that day. That is even freakier than the girl fucking the snowman. I don't want to... 
I, I'm going to get away from this history. fucked up video conversation because it's going to get really dark and our viewers are going to just be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Right after I tried what to, about... to tell everybody that this was PG-13 and we started talking about Yeah, and, and my comment was bad. Usually yours are. <laughs> that conversation was getting as dark as this beer. Yes, that is true. This beer is maybe maybe very this dark. maybe this beer is what's bringing it out in us. That's true. So let's just jump to the final segment of the night then. Favorite beer. Dun, 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 dun. We're gonna have to work on that. So what do we what do we think, guys? Who wants to start us off? I will go ahead and start. Uh, Get it. Take an, take an initiative here. Honestly, my favorite beer is probably this uh, dark sarcasm that we're drinking right now. This nice. Russian Imperial. That style. surprises me. That's awesome. No, seriously. Okay, because uh, the Built to Last and the One Hop Wonder, both of them, it was a good Pilsner and a good IPA, but it was nothing to write home about. Like the cans it itself is bland. Like dear the family. Beers, the beers were good, but they weren't like the, nothing stood out. Like like Brett said earlier. But this dark sarcasm was a nice, like, smoky flavor. Is a nice, like, it's very smooth going down. I didn't really care for the uh, the one that was uh, aged in whiskey. I can't remember the name of it. The Barley O'Reilly. I didn't really like the uh, the Barley, honestly. But it didn't uh, really like it, or it didn't match up to the other ones. It, Would you say that you liked it, or are you saying that you did not like it? This one I did because the built to last and the one hop wonder I enjoyed. Me too. I but too. Barley O'Reilly, I could say honestly, did not did not care for it. It was strong. It, it was, was very it was strong. strong. It tasted yeah, it, it was. tasted a, it tasted a lot like whiskey. But this Imperial That's Stout really that we're drinking right now, this is just crazy. I would have to disagree with AJ and say that the Barley O'Reilly was my favorite. Um, the couple of barley wines that I've had uh, were really good, and so to to have this one aged in a whiskey barrel really kind of gave it another note. It gave it just that I got that barley wine off the first sip flavor, and then and then everything that came in afterwards was just a hint of the barley wine and just that as Nick said that warmth of the whiskey like it felt like I took a shot a shot of whiskey with almost every single drink um but it had that almost almost wine flavor which is you know the barley wine it, it, you know it kind of sits like a wine a little bit um and it just it was really good dark sarcasm is second uh, one hop wonder is going to be third, and and I'm just not a fan of pilsners. I can drink them, but I'm just not the biggest fan of them. So, the built to last would have to be last. But I did enjoy everything we drank today. I could drink everything again, and we do have some more one hop wonder and built to last. So I'm sure we will enjoy them. I later don't think tonight. I don't think they're going to make it through the night. They won't. I'm we'll, pretty sure we'll enjoy them later. I'm pretty sure we're going to finish them off. Yeah, we'll go to pinball and. Come back and get a little lops up a doy. What time is it? Have some more. We'll we'll smash out some pinball, then we'll smash out some cold boys. Yep. You guys have fun doing that. I work at 11. I I gotta say that the Barley O'Reilly was very good. Uh, I have not had many barley wines, and normally I'm not much of a fan of it. But at this one, Really got my uh, palate a ruse because uh, the whiskey, and as most all of my friends know, I love whiskey. Me too. And it, it. the whiskey did stand out. And I got that too, but I got to I gotta give it to the dark sarcasm because it just, just really brought itself up a little more. Like, if the dark sarcasm didn't come so far, Full forward with the bourbon barrel uh, taste, with the smokiness and the bourbon hues and the underlinings of it. I I would have went all over the bar- barley wine, but got to go with this Russian Imperial. You're going with the Russian. Got to go with it. I think that makes 
I think that makes three of us. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the dark sarcasm too. If I, if not that, I was honestly gonna say <clears throat> the uh, the one hop. I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I did. Too. I liked it too. Not to leave that and uh, built the last out, but they were uh, very good. I mean, built to last isn't gonna be on my top 200 beers. I've been. <laughs> like, like it's it's a good pilsner. I would drink that before I would drink a lot of the commercial exactly, beers. Exactly. Exactly. It more than I would probably like a Bud Light, but um. Um, I did like the barley wine, uh, but even my snifter was probably, probably just about enough. I couldn't yeah. drink, I couldn't drink a, more than a snifter of it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you all could have seen that. Oh, um, that was, so, that was so, too good. So earlier we did kind of talk about, uh, my birthday and, and how, uh, so like three Zach fourths may of us. not have enjoyed it as much as we did. Yeah, uh, and we all tried to stop him, uh, but something happened. And I we didn't try we to don't. stop him. I was too all struck. You didn't, but me and Nick did. Let's uh, just. We're not talking about it. Yeah, we're gonna save it for another time. We're yeah. gonna let everybody, if they're listening, wonder what the fuck are they talking yeah, about. Yeah, no. Next time on that Brews did, with it, Dudes. It kind of, kind of ended Zach's night a little bit. But uh, I guess that joke came up because Zach walked in and he just tried to. He's here. He he's drinking a little bit of what we've got left over. How are you? How are you doing tonight, Zach? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much. He's uh he's part of the Pinisher Pinball yeah. League team. So. so of course he's uh finishing off one, and I give him that motion. No, 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 and he stops in Kinda horror. Reminded of the other night, which you're gonna find out. We're not on telling the next you about episode. it. Uh, but I guess. He yeah Zach, he was triggered. Zach said he was triggered. Bit, so. Okay, uh, one more time I'll bring up. Thanks again for listening to Brews with Dudes. Please share us with your friends. Share the podcast. Go back and listen to the other episodes. Share them with your friends. Check out the Journey into Comics Network, our parent network. Um, we talked tonight primarily about the Indiana Metal Fest going on at Indiana City Beer, uh, March 3rd and 4th in Indianapolis. We talked about the giveaway that we're doing. Uh, if you listen to this podcast and you share it, tag us in it, then you're entered... Uh, into a contest for a chance to win two two-day passes for the festivities. Um, we're going to release a couple different ways that you can also get entries in, so pay attention to that. Thank you, Brett, for joining us. Thank you. Austin. Thank you. Uh, AJ uh, went out to go smoke a cigarette, so he has missed us for the night. Um, thank you guys for listening, and we will see you next time on another episode of Brews with, with Dudes. dudes. <laughs>